pull off the AFC housing and uh, adjust our an aneroid spring and cut that fuel plate. About to pull this AFC housing, which stands for air fuel control, and there's a safety bolt you have to remove. So I use a chisel to do that. Um, this is on P-Pump trucks. So I just use a cold chisel like this guy and stick it down right behind the fuel line, right on top of that safety bolt head and smack it until it looks like a flathead screw to remove it. So once you've basically cut that slot in it, put your screwdriver in there. And a lot of times just the jarring from um, hammering on it loosens it up. It'll push a little bit. There you go. Take that guy out. So now that it's removed, I'll just get a bolt that's the same size and throw this guy away. So once the AFC housing is off, basically you have to just kind of slide forward and come up. And this will come off. That's your fuel plate right there. And the best thing to remove that is an impact screwdriver like this. Impact screwdrivers have a cam built into them, so when you smack them with a hammer on the top here, it causes a twisting motion down there. So these things are really tight, and sometimes they don't want to come out very easily, so this works really well. So once those are loose, you can take these screws out. Um, be very, very careful not to drop anything down in there. If you do, game over. You're pulling a pump. So there's a washer on there too, so be really careful. If you don't feel comfortable modifying this plate, one thing you can do is just take and loosen the screws up and slide it forward like that. Um, these things are about in the middle from the factory, so sliding it forward will probably give you 10 to 15 horsepower, and then tighten it back down. The next step is to modify your fuel plate, and this tooth right here is what we modify. So here's a chart of the ways you can modify it. You can't really do the blue one because that material doesn't exist right there unless you weld it onto it or something. Um, but you basically have two options. You can do the red one, um, and you can do a zero plate. Um, green being the zero. So with a zero plate, basically you just cut this tooth off flush. There you go, zero plate. You can use a cutoff wheel or a grinder to do this. Clean it up nice. So once you get it back in place, make sure that that slot is facing back towards the back of the truck. If you turn that plate around and put it in, you can get it stuck in there and it's a pain in the butt to get out. Also, slide it forward before you bolt it down. This will give you about 70 horsepower and 150 foot-pounds of torque, roughly. Um, and you can also take the AFC housing when you bolt it down and slide it forward. That will help a little bit. The next thing you can do is loosen up your aneroid spring in your air fuel control here. So underneath this cap, um, some people refer to it as a smoke screw. By loosening that up, it, it just increases the amount of fuel or how quickly it fuels. When this is in the vehicle, this is the back of the truck, and this is towards the front of the truck. So that little star wheel in there is what you're going to adjust. So basically, you just take a screwdriver and put it in there and turn the wheel. I'm trying to do this with one hand is a little difficult, but so you want to turn it. Basically, that's towards the passenger side of the vehicle, like that direction. Some people say only to go like four or five clicks, and I'll tell you right now, that won't even do anything. So you can go out 50, 60 clicks and not have any problem. And basically, when it's um, turning, it'll, it'll kind of move to the left. And there you go, back together. Roughly 70, 80 horsepower and 150 foot-pounds of torque. And cost me a little bit of time. You don't have to take the injection lines off to do this, but it is easier.